Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome for tonight's webinar. Uh, one out of three webinars. This is the last one. It is a webinar um, with about master match from Picture Instruments. And with me here, it is Robin Ox. Hello, Robin. How are you doing? Hi, I'm doing good. Hello, everyone outside there. Good evening. Yeah. And uh, the topic for tonight, it's tips and tricks when working with Spider Checker and Mastermind. What can you do when things go wrong? And uh, so we will have a webinar presentation plus a lot of uh, demonstration from Robin. Um, at my end, I will do a little bit less of demonstration tonight because I have also an additional information about our newest product. And uh, this uh, entire webinar will take about an hour. And after this, we go into the um, question and answer section. And in the question and answer section, Robin and I will, will answer all the questions you have. If you have questions within between, please enter them already into the question uh, field and uh, we will check. Reg webinar will be recorded and um, the recording link will be published with the follow-up mail you will receive within a few days after this webinar. So let's start. Um, it's Robin and me and um, I'm Boris Bergman from Datacolor. I'm uh, responsible for support and training in our company. And uh, as I mentioned, this is a webinar out of three. We are talking about tips and tricks. Uh, let's have a look into, we have an agenda. Um, we uh, would like to have a short information about the advantages and disadvantages of the different spider checker models. And, um, some uh, information how to avoid mistakes when shooting because it's a little bit like image editing. If you have a good image, you can easily create a perfect one. If you have a image that is really bad, it's a hard way to become this into a good one. Okay. And there's also an information, what can you do if individual fields are not correct, uh, displayed correctly? Um, we will see color adjustments without brightness and contrast adjustment and um, yeah, much more. Okay, good. Um, let's start right away. We are talking about the spider checker family. The spider checker family is what we can see here. Um, the three for the photo re area, spider checker photo released a year ago, spider checker, Mm, yeah, you can say the dinosaur because it's more than 10 years in the field and the spider checker 24. Let's have a look for the spider checker. This is the first product we had. You see size is, yeah, about a book size, you can say. Uh, it works uh, from the software with Adobe Photoshop RAW, with Lightroom, and we are talking here on Lightroom Classic. Uh, we are talking not on the small version. Sorry, Adobe has changed the names for Lightroom and the small Lightroom version uh, through the years a couple of times. You can also use it with Focus from Hasselblad, which is a free of charge software. And DaVinci Resolve and Hire from Blendmetric. So um, the cards can be replaced if there is an issue, as we have the fade checker, you see the red dot, the errors indicating, and there's another one uh, covered by the frame so you can see when it, it's time to replace. Okay, you have additional skin tones, and we have a good thing that you can purchase replacement cards. To be honest, if you keep the spider checker closed, there are not much things you will have to do and the spider checker will last for a very, very long time. We can see it that we don't sell much replacement cards. Okay, if you open the spider checker, these the frames are magnetic and you can turn around the cards so you can have gray cards for internal color, um, camera ba white balance, for example, and so on. The 
youngest uh, spider checker photo for the photography area product is about a year old now. Uh, what is interesting here is the black, which is a really, really deep black. And what you can see, it is the balancing of the uh, colors of your camera. So that means the product Spider Checker is also to adjust the different characteristics of different cameras, color characteristics into one setting. This is a very easy way. We will see when Robin is doing it. Robin can do much, much more. So he has the Swiss Army knife and we have the little tiny tool, but together it works perfectly. Okay, so what do you have here with the spider checker photo? Um, we have uh, a small uh, cover, as you can see. Uh, we have this really extreme dark black, and in total we have 62 colors. We have and I will close now my camera because it will be not recorded. We have um, 62 colors on the uh, four cards. There are 24 basic colors. We have eight skin tones, um, 24 step gray gradations, large uh, gray targets, and white and uh, black settings, what we do have. It's important to know the size of the card is the same size as with our newest product, I will show you at the end of this webinar. Okay, so this is the spider checker photo. And um, this is what we can do, adjusting the colors uh, among each other when they come from different camera sources. And for those who are um, in the business for a little bit longer time, uh, like for example, Robin, I am, uh, you see, I was born 66, so I have a few years already in the market. Uh, we remember the old times when they had the analog film, where also the film had a little bit different color characteristics. And this is the same what you have with your camera, with your camera lens combinations. And by this, you can do a perfect adjustment among each other. We have the small product, the starting product we often call it the spider checker 24 it's the right side of the large spider checker and to give you an overview we have this uh, little family comparison um, and this is only on the spider checker for the photography market you see okay um you see a different amount of um patches and so on. I don't want to talk too long about because this is more for your reference that you have an idea what you're looking at. Okay, so a few tips and tricks. Um, one is to have um, the spider checker, the spider checker photo, spider checker photo uh, 24 on a tripod or on a stable surface. You should illuminate at an angle of 45 degrees um, because, of course, all patches should be uh, get the same amount of light. Shoot in RAW and open the image in Adobe Camera RAW, Hasselblad, Focus, DaVinci Resolve, or Master Match, for example. Okay. There's an important information, please. You will have to trim the image uh, when you go into the spider checker software. If you do not, not do this correctly, and this is the way to do it, you see the red frame here, um, you will have to do a manual adjustment. It is, in my, uh, from my point of view, easier if you just go back, trim it again, cut out, and then you have the ability to have a perfect correction. Okay, then you will use the eyedropper tool and it's the E2 patch. And if you see it's A, B, C, D. So this is the um, uh, column E and patch number two, that's for the white balance. And what you also do, the E1 patch for the exposure. If you're in Lightroom and um, uh, you will see in Lightroom the um, values underneath the histogram, and this will bring you for the E1 patch 
approximately 90%. And if you go for the blacks, for the E6 patch, which is the dark black, it's around 4% in Lightroom. The Adobe Camera Raw values are mentioned here also. Okay, here you can see um, the grid, and this you can attach by the, uh, adjust by the handles. You see these little buttons in here. Okay, in Lightroom, it's very easy. You have the menu photo added in, and in Adobe Camera Raw, you are in your um, raw um, converting tool, Adobe Camera Raw, save as a TIFF, 16-bit, Adobe RGB, and then you can drag and drop uh, the file into the Spider Checker software into the standard level person. Okay, so, what is important, you can save the um, image in uh, different modes. We have three different modes. You have a colorimetric mode, a saturation mode, which is more interesting, for example, for um, architecture photography, and we have a portrait mode. What uh, will this be? The portrait mode will reduce the saturation in the HSL sliders on orange, red, and yellow a little bit. So that makes skin tones less reddish. Okay, you can, what you can do when you're in the software, you can create all this in one step because whenever you say save, you will be asked if you want to quit or if you want to create another template. Okay, so by this you can create all this. In Lightroom you will see um, after a restart of Lightroom the settings appearing as user presets. Okay, what else can you do? It's something uh, really interesting to know for those who are shooting as photographer with customers in front. Um, you see as we all know, we have the ability when we're having a raw file that we have all the reserves and we can adjust everything afterwards. But I would recommend if the customer is on location that you use the spider checker uh, cards uh, to do a manual white balance because this will be seen by the customer and then he understands. And the advantage, even if you shoot in raw, is that the preview image that is saved with the image file is color corrected from the white balance. And therefore, um, that uh, helps you to show the, uh, the customer that you know your business. Okay, here you can see a few information on this, but please refer to your camera. Okay, and as I mentioned, we have a new a uh, family member, this was um, released uh, last Thursday. We have the spider checker video. It is for the video environment, so it works with the classical vectorscopes and waveform monitors. You will find in, yeah, you can say all professional and semi-professional video editing software. It's um, really an advanced target because you have, you can find such targets for years, not even more for years, um, for decades, because these have been, um, for those who remember where vectorscope and waveform comes from, uh, it has been in the market in the analog film. It has been in the market in the analog in times of TV, because these technologies has been used for color correction at that time. And as these have been really good working, all applications who do image, uh, film editing have these technologies built in in the digital world now. And what we have done, what is new, we have this color card, which um, the order of the patches is new, and this order gives um, more information, and we have therefore this uh, patent pending now, because we will see how this will work. And you get five cards in total. These five cards are not matte. They are in uh, gloss um, target cards. 
This is um, for a wider gamut and it is easier to detect flares uh, if you have flares from the recording due to the reason you have different um, yeah, light settings at the location. Okay, so um, we have a new um, case that is for better handling. You see, it is uh, important that the person who hold the spider checker video um, should not have the fingers on the color patches you can see. Okay, so that helps to, to make it better uh, processing the correction afterwards. These five replaceable cards have the same form factor as the spider checker photo. That means we will have options for those who work in both worlds to come from the spider checker photo and uh, yeah, purchase as a site grade the spider checker video cards. And for those who are coming from the video, you can purchase the spider checker photo cards. And as the spider checker photo comes with the spider checker software, while the spider checker video does not need any software, the spider Checker video will contain in the box already the serial for those who are purchasing the site grade for the spider checker photo later on. So you're fully equipped. Okay, as I mentioned, um, we have five cards, and uh, I was talking about flare detection. So that's an important point. But let's have a closer look onto the cards. We have this patent pending color card. Um, it's um, rated to Rec 709. For those who need more of the classical way, you see that's the uh, conventional color card. We have the grayscale card, and it's uh, two large, uh, three large bars and 20 two-step grayscale um, crosswise. And we have the neutral gray card for white balance and the focus star. That's what is common with the product. And let's have a look. You see, um, as I mentioned, uh, Vectorscope is quite an old technology in the market. What do we do? We have built the layout and the layout helps to have additional information. We have 100% and the more important 75% uh, values for the vectorscope and skin tones. And as I mentioned, it's patent pending. What is new? Um, usually you have your primaries and your secondary colors. And for those who have seen 75%, you can see the 100 and the 75% uh, target here. But what is new now, you see the lines was in between and the, this pattern arrangement creates lines was in, in between that allows you to see how the color is behaving between the patches. And of course, if you're in the vectorscope and if you're um, in the hue versus saturation, of course you can adjust the lines within between so you have full control not on the primaries and secondaries of the colors you have also uh, full control on the colors within between and here you can see the skin tones okay what else um the grayscale pattern part um you see we have the information for the waveform here uh, so that means for the black, it goes down here, the middle gray here, and the white goes on here. So it should be around 95%. It should be around 5 8% here for the, for the black and 50% uh, here if you are in a percentage scaling here. What else do we have? We have 22 steps in each direction also in these small cards. And so you have this steps in here and also in here. You are seeing that they are not identical from the level because these are not identical um, gray scale steps here. It is um, all, uh, mentioned in the um, explanation in the quick start guide what they do represent. But the big advantage is that you have the 
by this, the contrast control, and that makes it easy. And for all those, of course, if it's not perfect like this, if you have the three lines uh, for the three colors, yeah, you go into the waveform, you go into the curves and adjust the curves to have the perfect white balance. This is our newest product, Spider Checker Video, designed for video use. Um, as I mentioned, hybrid uh, usage is possible in the version with the Spider Checker Photo, where you can upgrade from or to the Spider Checker Photo. We have more information on our website, and if you want to have a look, we already have a video on uh, the usage in. Uh, no, sorry, it's not Premiere Pro, it's DaVinci Resolve and uh, Final Cut Pro video. There are more videos to come so that you can see how you can take advantage from the Spider Checker video. So this was all for me, and now I will um, bring you over to Robin. So I will create Robin now to be the moderator. So Robin, you can share your screen with us now and come out for the practical card, how to have these little trips and tricks with master match. Maybe one information, uh, the spider checker video card is not yet built in in master match, but we have been talking about the next upgrade in a few weeks, whenever. Um, will bring yes that's, uh, that's planned um i think uh here as soon as we get it we can uh, put the values and and create a template and put the neutral colors uh, into master match but uh, yeah as for now um you can yeah already match cameras if you want to match two video cameras uh, you can um do that already with the new spider checker video no problem you can uh, yeah take a reference shot and then to match shot and and uh, match them and also if you um, correct one version for yourself we you see um yeah, uh, yeah correcting it manually you can uh, create your own template as a reference but yeah be patient a little bit uh, then we put the original reference measured colors into master match and so then you can load it as a template inside of master match perfect Okay, so let's start. Maybe I turn off my video so you have a little bit more space to see my screen. Okay, um, great. I think you should see Master Match now. Yes, we do. Um, yeah, again, uh, thanks to Sascha Hüttenhain. Uh, we use some images from him to uh, yeah, demonstrate the software. And don't worry, it's not so bad that he took the image. Um, as you see, some artifacts. It's already a loaded reference card which was applied to this image and if you see before after it makes the result worse than before and that's our topic for today showing you some tips tricks and handy information as well as some unusual use cases for master match and uh, spider checkers so yeah Let's start with this image and let's have a look um, why this is looking so ugly, what we can do to improve it, and maybe let's have a look at some different ways to improve it. So everybody who has not seen our first two webinars, I strongly recommend to watch it since we show a lot of things in general uh, using Master Match. Um, this is a reference image, this is to match images and see fields are matched or calculated between these two. We uh, explain it in more detail in the first webinars. Uh, this is a preview image where the same difference is applied on. It's just for review, as you see, as ugly as the result is here. And this is a LUT visualization. It uh, shows a lookup table. Um, it's, yeah, it's a lookup table with uh, 32 anchor points. Um, and you see um, this is a lookup table it's a cube, um, all the slices uh, next to each other instead of behind each, uh, each other, which could, uh, should, uh, or would make the cube. And you see the applied color correction or the changes in the lookup table. And you see very good here 
that it creates artifacts. So if it if these transitions are some spots here or lines or whatever, then it's making artifacts. It's it's not looking good. It shows that um, yeah. Uh, yeah, that that you should improve it. And um, yeah, as you learn in the first webinar, the easiest way to improve things if they are not smooth is the LUT smoother. So you can smoothen out this. And if you see as I increase it, maybe I zoom a little bit more to the face, maybe one to one or here. So you see, oops, it's getting better the more I increase the LUT smoother. You can see the same here. Maybe let's go a little bit on to this side. Here you see the artifacts, very good. And if we smooth the LUT, they will be yeah, blurred out in a lookup table. But this is not the way you should go because uh, just blurring it out can change uh, can change the colors. And as you see, it's better, but it's not perfect. So why it's not perfect? There are different purposes why the original shot of the color card is not pretty good. And one of this, we also had it mentioned it very shortly. You see it here is a finger right in front of one of the color patches. And so this field is matched to white. So the software says so. Let's take the skin color and convert it to white. And that's a problem because here, a little bit of the skin colors, as you see here, are also converted to white. This is not exactly white, but it's next to the skin colors, which are here in, in a mixture with the color field and it's matched to white. So we can go to set colors and create modify if we want to modify the color grid it's uh, possible if you make your own grid and it's also possible that you modify points in an yeah in a, in a color chart template so either you can move it and you see already it's getting better but this area is so small that i it's hard to not hit any kind of the border or the finger or a kind of shadow so i would simply delete this so we can go to the delete button and then click it and now can go here and everything looks very much better i can i can load the original one so so you can completely compare i had the neutral one with the spectrometer colors we have also a more natural version but maybe let's uh you know, stick with the spectrometer at the moment so back loaded visit point going back here and deleting the point. Oops, I turned off the trash bin icon. So deleting the point again, it's better. What can we do to make it even better? So you see a little bit, the shadows is a little bit harsh here. And here's also the transitions are not 100% smooth. They are a little bit smooth are much smoother than, than with the wrong field, but it's not 100% perfect. So again, we can say, oh, well, let's do the rest with the load smoother. You can smooth it out and it's looking very good. But on the other hand, sometimes it makes sense to work with less points because the load smoother also mixes the, the wrong colors into the correct colors. It, it's okay, it's smoothing out and the uh, wrong colors have a very low influence, but anyways, oftentimes it's better to work with less points because depending on vignetting, depending on uh, light situation, depending on uh, yeah, how highlights are, are built, you can have different colors on similar color patches. So you have whatever, one, two, three, four, five tones, which are red, to pink, which are in a very close area. And even this one and this one is very close. And also the blue ones, if you look at the blue one here at the bottom and the blue one here, it's very, very similar the color. But if the vignetting of the lens is a little bit more here than here, then it's 
yeah, it's not the same difference like it is in the card. It, it's um, it's if if we measure the card, the difference is exact. But if there is a vignetting on one side of the color checker or spider checker, then it's not exact. And that's the reason why oftentimes it helps to just reduce the number of colors. So maybe let's simply delete all of this and maybe go a little bit higher and zoom a little bit out so you immediately can see the changes which is uh, yeah these are not 100 percent perfect they are good enough but as you see if i delete these points a lot changes and even by the half of the spider checker we have enough information and enough color to make a good result which is much more smooth Another thing, how you could improve it if you don't want to, if, if, if you want to keep all these nuances of color, but if they may uh, be different in, in uh, brightness, let's load it again. So I, yeah, and of course, the wrong, the, the point uh, on the finger you want or you have to delete, but the other ones are only nuances and you can keep them. But if you want to, keep them and you see hey here are a little bit of uh yeah, unevenness and and uh, it looks not 100 percent smooth then you can reduce the brightness information from the color conversion from the color matching so these colors are matched to these colors and it's not only the colors matched also the saturation is br uh, matched and the brightness is matched and why could it be difficult to match the brightness Let's quickly have a look at the short video clip I have here. You see a Spider Checker 48 in a product studio, and uh, we recorded um, yeah, a 360 spin of a shoe. But if you see, what, if you only look at the shoe at the moment, the whole spin, the shoe looks kind of the same brightness. It's not getting brighter or darker or whatever. But if you are looking at the color patches here, for example, you have a look at the green field. If I go more here, 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 oh, wow, it's getting much, much brighter, more saturated oftentimes. You get a highlight on it. So the difference, if, if you match, let's say you match this one to a measured one, or you match that one to a measure, measured one, it's a huge difference because one time we match dark green to the measured version of green, and one time we match bright green to the measured version. And that's the reason why we can say, hey, let's mark all of these fields. That's an advantage in the new version uh, compared to if, if some Germans uh, under you and have watched the German webinar, you have uh, seen that I have to change every single field separately. Now we have the possibility by command click, you can press command and just pull, uh, yeah, drop a rectangle about, uh, around all fields which you want to mark. So you can say also, I want to mark only this half, or I want to mark, uh, yeah, if you mark both and one half was marked, it changes that. So let's mark all, and then remove the brightness information from this field. So if you remove the brightness change, then the brightness is from the original from the image also from from the from the shot and the colors the hues and at the moment the saturations too are from the reference card oftentimes if you reduce the brightness it makes sense to also reduce the saturation influence so you only have the hue and now you see brightness and saturation are the same but especially look at the skin color it has a slightly yellow tint before and after matching it removed and skin color looks totally natural so this is also one yeah one thing you should consider if a little bit of highlight gloss are on the color fields then you should uh, work or consider work with this uh yeah this is trick let's maybe compare it to our second version May i bring this back and uh, yeah it's a little bit made because it's the spectrometer colors 
um, let's load the other template. We have a natural one. So if you press Alt while the, the option key uh, while clicking this, then the removed field will stay removed also with the other color template. Otherwise, I would load it and it will be appearing again because the original template has it, of course. So let's press the option key and click the natural one. And this is a version which has much more contrast and it's it's not uh, so flat because if a color card is measured then uh, there is no highlight it's uh, everything uh, yeah, is measured directly on the color card that's we, why we made a more natural version where we captured uh, this uh, spider checker photo and leave the natural gloss or the natural highlight in it not a not a not a very strong highlight but a yeah, natural highlight and keeps the color from the measurement but Again, if you say, oh, whoa, this is too strong for me uh, because it has too much contrast because it, it darkens the black to dark and so the white to white, then again, you can go here and reduce the influence of brightness and we get back to the original brightness and saturation. And now, if you compare before after, both templates are doing more or less the same. Any questions until now um yes we had a few questions but they were have been all spider related and i have answered them okay so please, so please continue <laughs> i can go on okay so if you say well it's nice that master match has these both templates where i can I'd click them to compare. That's a more natural. That's a spectrometer one. It's nice to have them, but I want to have a template or I want to have uh, some things that only applies the hue of the mirrored things, not uh, hue, saturation, and brightness. You can easily create it yourself. Um, you have to load, um, yeah, you have to load first. Um, a color card which you um, have shot yourself. Um, I have one here. So this one um, is here. And yeah, okay, it's similar to what you see in the template because uh, yeah, I made the template based of this. But um, if you have not shot it 100% ne neutral, you can shoot a color card, correct it with master match, and then load it again um here again like in the last tutorial i show you how to rotate the grid so now all the patches are matching and going back here then of course it's pretty similar because this is a photo uh yeah which was my basis to make the reference card but if we go here and reduce the saturation and the brightness information and say, well, that's before, that's after. It's only the nuances of uh, of color shift which are corrected to make a 100% correct color. And you want to have this as a template. Yes, then you can say, um, let's save as template, and let's say it's um, webinar three hue only correct and so let's save it and now we can say let's go back to the uh, reference card oh I have to delete this point again okay that's this is a spectrometer one this is the natural one maybe let's go back to the spectrometer one before after and now let's load our or maybe let's first have a look um sorry I loaded the spectrometer one, and if you click one of these fields, oh, I have the trash bin on, no matter, let's click another one. You see saturation and brightness is 100% because it's saved as 100% in the template. But if you say, let's go to the webinar three hue only correction, which we immediately created, it's before after, it changes only the hue. And if you click one of these, color fields, you see saturation change and brightness change is back to zero. So you can go afterwards, as you can reduce it in the other one, you can go afterwards, mark all the things and say, hey, well, I want to have uh, 
more of the brightness change in it so you can still bring it back and it brings back the brightness and saturation change to your image. Yeah, that's an, an, yeah, maybe some useful thing for some of you um, yeah, who want to uh, modify these cards or want to save a modified uh, version of it. This is yeah, one mistake. You can uh, have a finger in front of your card. Another thing would be a shadow in front of your card. So maybe let's load another file where I have a shadow in front of the card. So let's say this is my to match image. Um, now it's looking ugly. As I told you in the first webinar, it's calculates in real time. It could be disturbing, but you can turn out the color calculations. So you can place the grid without being disturbed by the modifications. Okay, let's turn it on again. And you see it looks not 100% good. First, on the left side, you see here's a harsh shadow from the case of the spider checker photo. That's not the biggest problem. We can pull the fields more to the right. But on the right side, there's a complete shadow from the middle. That's a common common mistake you can do while shooting. Um, it is holding the reference card to a very, very low angle to the sun or to your light source. Then on the one hand, this shadow can appear and also yeah, it can bring up some highlights on your reference card. So if you want to get rid of it, so you see in the face, it's it's looking very ugly and very destroyed. It's because it matches uh, yeah, the normal skin color to the normal skin color, and it matches a pretty much darker skin color, which is in the shadow, also to the normal skin color. And this makes artifacts. So if you look here, you can see this artifacts very heavily here. You see, yeah, this is not a smooth transition. You can, uh, yeah, again, you can use this LUT smoother, which uh, you can also see here in the image. It's, uh, yeah, if, if you look in the face, it makes it very much better. But as I told you, that's not the best way to do it. Let's do it yeah, on two ways. On the one hand, we can say, hey, hue is similar, no matter if it's in the, maybe only slightly different, but uh, usually it should be not so different if it's in the shadow or in the sun, the hue is the same. So we can just produce hue and bright, uh, saturation and brightness influence and leave the hue influence by 100%. And now it's looking very much better. But on the end, I recommend not doing this. I recommend to use the trash bin and just delete the points which are in the shadow. And if you go only with the normal points, then it looks very much better. And if it's looking a little bit oversaturated, maybe it depends on the um, it depends on the spectrometer version of the spider checker. Oh, I accidentally deleted one field too much, but let's lo load the natural version. Ah, okay. It's uh, I can't you uh, load it with uh, option click because that's not a reference. That's my loaded image. So let's load first the spectrometer version and I have to delete this points again. And now I can compare between the spectrometer and the natural version. So if I go this, oh, I forgot to press the option key, sorry. So you see immediately what happened. So if I want to compare, of course, I have to press the option key while loading the spectrometer version. It's a little bit more flat and the other one has more contrast. But anyways, you can say if it's too much in the sun and it's not realistic to a measured version or to a studio environment, you can reduce saturation and brightness from this change. And at the end, at least you get the correct colors. Contrast and colors are always separated. Um, the colors are matched in any case correctly, 
but with the contrast, it's always depending on the environment, the light situation, and so on. All the reference cards in our templates are made in a studio environment or measured with a spectrometer. And if the light situation on location is completely different, it's very hard to match contrasts in an image because it's yeah, it's always different. And that's why I've shown you how to reduce the saturation and brightness information for that. What happens if you maybe accidentally forgot your reference card or it's completely unusable because it's completely in the shadow or yeah, maybe too much gloss or the results are not good. Let's say I load a different file here. Going to the Qigong footage again as a reference image and oh, this is making immediately the match and why it's looking ugly of course because the grid is not here at the right position so we are working with if we're working with a reference image then the grid is in the reference image or in a, in a, in a template if you're working with a template the grid is in the template but if not we can also press set colors and then we can pull up the data color spider checker photo grid and then we have the grid of all colors and you see it's again on the wrong direction so let's turn it by 180 degree place these fields again a little bit better so the shadow is not in the way and then this is the matching from with shadow and with yeah with more uh, half shadow and with full shadow let's remove the field again okay and let's remove the saturation and brightness maybe not 100 percent to match a little bit more the mood of the other image and now you can switch force and back so let's try to achieve a similar result without any color checker so if you go to the free point mode and reset all the points with this uh, round arrow you can reset all the points that's unedited and with this eyedropper tools this is the eyedropper tool for the colored points and this uh, eyedropper tool for neutral points so let's say we take the eyedropper tool for colored points and then we pick something in the sky so we pick the sky and you immediately see it's matched the color of this guy of course it's getting too dark everything getting bluish you can uh, pull this around it makes a little bit artifacts because it's uh, darkening it too much and we don't have other points so before correcting this let's take a second point let's say we go to the skin color and go to the other image and let's choose something in the skin so we skin matches skin okay that's looking much better of course here in this situation it's more saturated but it's looking more natural here it's looking a little bit unnatural if it's so saturated so let's pull down the saturation and the brightness for this point a little bit let's choose another point maybe in the shirt here oh we match the shirt to the chain maybe let's go to the chart here again so reducing oh i think we that's a problem if you if you have two similar blue tones you have this blue and this blue and in this blue you completely reduce the saturation and brightness effect and the other blue which is next to it you don't reduce it it makes artifacts if you go to the blue here too and reduce it the same amount or similar amount like here then it's making less artifacts and the image looks much more natural let's take a force point maybe the greens it's looking a little bit unnatural because in this image maybe the green here is much brighter here yeah here's a dark green 
and a bright green. So maybe let's go in this image to the other side. So we have similar green tones that we want to match. And again, you see in real time how it matches the green and how it influences the surrounding. But again, since the brightness is not the same, I recommend to pull it back. And now it's yeah, maybe not as easy as with a color matcher, uh, yeah, this, this is a, a spider checker, but in cases you forgot your spider checker and have a photo or a yeah, shot you have to match, then at least you have a solution to match it. Any questions so far? No. Um, there were uh, another few questions, but you're too good mm -hmm. today. There are only questions on spider checker video. <laughs> so yeah, I answered. We, we do. We, it's a uh, yeah. We did it three times in German and uh, three times uh, now in English. And uh, yeah, maybe I try to answer the questions from the last yeah. webinars before you have the chance to write them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, then there is a third mode in the software, which is a pixel difference mode. Uh, this um, yeah. This is you can grab looks from an before and from an after file. So if you screenshot any look with a before file and an after file from social media or wherever you find it, then you can go, let's see, um, that's the reference one. And yeah, here is a warning because pixel difference needs two images which have exactly the same size. Let's load the other one. So this is before, this is after. You say, oh, it's looking the same, but you see uh, here is a text in and maybe some people put text in it. And if you turn off and turn on the look, it adapts the look pretty good. But in this image, maybe you don't recognize artifacts, but if you look, have a closer look, um, do we see artifacts here? Ah, here. Here on the left side, you see. I don't know. Can you can you see them good in uh, in go to webinar? Yes. yes, they are with small, small they are dots. Clearly. You can easily yeah. remove them with a lot smoother. But anyways, it's a pixel difference mode. We measure the difference between this and this. And what is the problem here? This white letters are matched to this black letters and they are on a different position so we match some gray tones to the black of the of the font and if we want to get rid of it we can just use this rectangle yeah just grab it and reduce the area of yeah where the colors are calculated so all, everything which is outside this rect rectangular is not considered in the color calculation so if you look at this um i think this has to be something different but from this one we sh should see any artifacts in the complete black or white ah you see i think these are these small yeah. dots here in the bright in the bright area these are some yeah. artifacts in uh yeah from from the font and what's the problem you, you you maybe you think oh well i don't see it in the image but if you say oh i like this look and i want to use it on a video then in a video it can appear that uh, it makes artifact uh, in the sky if you have some bright areas and then uh, some dark pixels come over some edges and you you recognize it very strongly. Okay, that was one thing regarding the pixel difference mode. Maybe let's go back to color checkers and uh, yeah, use a spider checker for a maybe uncommon use case. Um, for this case, I want to make the workflow in the completely other direction. I don't want to have an wrong color image and uh, correct it to a neutral color image i have neutral colors so let's load a neutral which i want to match 
And now I want to have wrong colors. Why do I want have wrong colors? Well, I want to simulate an underwater look. So I found a, a video clip. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not a diver myself, but I found a video clip on, on YouTube uh, where someone used um, spider checker underwater. And if you hover with the mouse, you see, uh, well, in the bottom left, this is a brown field. So how do we get this to master match? Let's simply make a screenshot. Go to the reference section, press Command or Control, depending on Windows or Mac, Command V. And now we included this image with our underwater colors. If you are a diver, you know the deeper you go, the red disappears, and the orange and yellows disappear. And yeah, in the end, the last color which which stay or disappears uh, if you're deep enough is blue. And so it's not like it's uh, yeah the deeper you're going the darker it gets it's like uh, red is disappearing faster than other colors and that's we want to simulate how do we simulate it we go back to the three point mode go to create modify and press the reset button again so we start from scratch now everything here looks normal this brown field we have to match to this brown field. So what we're doing, we're using the color eyedropper tool, picking the brown one. No, it's not picked to this field. It's picked to the same position, but the position is different. So we pull it here. Let's pick the next one. It's obviously the next one next to each this field. Pick the next one going here putting it here then here we have to pay attention a little bit here's something yeah mirroring maybe the camera the housing or whatever then let's pick next to each other so we don't uh, pick this uh, shadow or this reflection going here again let's do the next one going here and the last one is oops it's this one it's going here so what else do we need let's have a quick look what um yeah what colors is missing we have brown blue green maybe a little bit red one would be good um so it is or orange at least orange or we can use also this red above the green so the orange is directly under the bronze so Let's go here and pull this to this field. And the red one is one, two, three fields more to this direction. So one, two, three, it could be this one. Now turn on the look again and we simulate. If you, if you look here and here, we simulate the colors underwater at a depth of, I don't know, what is this, 50 meter or something like that. So yeah, what, what can we do with this? We can have a look here. Of course, it's uh, maybe looking a little bit odd, um, maybe because also, um, no, I haven't marked this. Um, yeah, I can reduce the color info, uh, the brightness information. But on the end, um, yeah, maybe let's try to use this look or this greenish tones on a video clip. So I have a video clip here. It's a, a little bit darker one and we can easily make a screenshot to go here and paste the screenshot again. So we see the look or we can also go say, if you say, oh, well, that's going to the right direction, then let's export it as a lookup table. Uh, all about the export functions of the lookup tables, how to use this uh, lookup tables in Premiere, 
After Effects, uh, Lightroom, Capture One, Photoshop. We explained in depth in the in the first two webinars. So um, yeah, if you don't know how to get this as a profile into Lightroom, as an ICC profile into Capture One, I recommend to watch the first tutorial again. But now let's do a quick export of the color matching LUT and let's save it under water. Dot cube, cube is fine. Premiere can read cube. So let's save it. Going back to Premiere. And then, um, yeah, maybe you can use the, the Lumetri plugin, but maybe let's uh, do a little bit uh, advertising for our LUT mixer because um, yeah, there's one special thing which you can't do with the Lumetri thing. Let's drop the LUT mixer plugin on the file, open the user interface. Here are five LUTs which you can load and mix to each other. The simple thing which is going with the uh, our normal Premiere Lumetri LUT loading uh, is just loading a cube. And yeah, here we go. It looks the same as in Master Match. But now I show you why I used it here in, in LUT Mixer because we have a skin tone protection. Um, sorry guys, I set my Premiere to German. so. There is an English version and also the plugin is English. This means skin tone protection. So if you want to protect the skin tones and bring them back a little bit, you can increase the skin tone protection. So the skin tones will be protected from this underwater look. And now we have a nice teal and orange look. And if it's a little bit too strong, we can maybe reduce the look, uh, uh, yeah, reduce it a little bit. So we created by this workaround or uncommon use case, a nice teal and orange look. It's burning that uh, yeah, because um, it needs a few seconds that uh, the lookup tables are saved into the project. So you don't need it on your hard drive anymore. If you save the project, recall the project, it's loaded in the project. Yeah, so we made a nice teal and orange look, um, yeah, which you can drop or, or, yeah, or create from an underwater color checker. Yeah, something something different, completely different. Uh, yeah, but I wanted to show you how you can use or use it in a creative way and work with master match and spider checkers in a very creative way. Perfect. Uh, yeah, this was, uh, I think, the last uh, topic from our agenda for today, right? That's so, correct, yes. Um, so allow me to take over again. And uh, this is what I will do now. So this was the last slide. And uh, that brings us now to come to an end. And for those who want to learn more about color management, have a look at this spider ebook where we have six chapters mostly from photographer's uh, point of view, but also videographers. So it's free of charge. You go to that link, fill out a little form, and you can download the PDF file. So additional information, if you need, you go to our website in the support section under contact support, and you can contact us at tech support and also Robin, master match, uh, any questions, any questions for picture instruments, products, it is uh, your website where the people can get support as well, right? Okay, yes. good, good, perfect. So um, this will bring us a little bit to, towards an end, uh, but um, we have prepared a little bit for you. We have the spider checker photo offer, which is uh, 10 euros off and uh, or uh, an equivalent in British pound. There's a discount code loyal23. But this is only half the truth because we have, when you purchase a spider checker photo or any other spider checker from us at the moment, and uh, this is not for the new spider checker video because this does not need any software. 
So it is Spider Checker, Spider Checker 24, and it's also capture, uh, Spider X Capture Pro, Spider Checker Photo, and it's the Spider X Photo Kit, wherever you have the Spider Checker product. Inside, when you have the product, you install the software, you activate the software, you get a license code, and you get another mail with the an additional discount code. And this is the more interesting one, because this will give you uh, 195 euros, the equivalent is round about 180 British pound um, the, as price for master match. That means 130 euros to save, 150 euros to save, 130 pounds to save. This is the second step. So install, spider check a photo, and then activate the software and then with the activation you get an email where you have the voucher code and this voucher code is valid in the master match in the picture instruments shop where you can purchase master match so this is what we have as uh, for new data color customers and for those who have already the spider checker um, we have an but we Robin has offered a voucher code which is called Data Color 99, which gives you a 99 euro with around 85 British pounds, depending on the current exchange rate in the uh, picture instruments shop when you purchase Mastermatch. Good, that is a little re review of what we had. We had neutral matching, we had uh, matching multiple video and photo cameras, including foot lock, lock footage. And we have a little webinar about tips and tricks and when things may go wrong. Therefore, this brings us now to an end and I will terminate the recording.